Your codes come from your FXL file or feature definition file. This is defined in the office. As part of this file, you can assign attributes to each code. We now have our code. Next, we want to have a numeric field that we can fill out for the spread of this tree. To make it easier in the field and office, I'm going to make sure I put an M behind it to say that it's being defined in meters. I want to make sure that every time this code is being used, that the spread is being filled out. So I'm going to set this as being a required attribute. The default for it is going to be three meters. My minimum, so that it doesn't go below one meter where I want someone to use another code, is one meter. My maximum is going to be 30 meters so that anything beyond that is treated as being a typo and should get flagged. And I'm going to keep the number of decimals down to zero. So it has to be whole meters that are being defined here. You can now see if we expand this, we have our attribute field for spread as a numeric entity. Now, to prompt yourself for those attributes uh, in Trimble Access, under Options, there's a checkbox that says Prompt for Attributes. Now, attributes can also be used to scale symbol sizes or rotate them. So they're sometimes quite important. They tell you information about the point you're going to measure. Here, I'm going to turn my keep my prompt for attributes checkbox on because as I measure, I want the software to prompt me to fill in those attributes. In the latest version of Trimble Access, we now show symbols in the map. We don't have any symbology for this yet, so I'll right click again and choose to add a new symbol. I'm going to give it the same name, spread, so it's easier to see the association there of what it's doing. We have a number of symbols already available in this particular um, library. We can go to import symbols though, and if you found that the full listing of symbols didn't meet what you needed, we can just click on the three dots, a horizontal ellipsis, and choose to browse to a source file. We're able to select from the TGO symbol library, DWG and DXF. These just need to contain a CAD block and that can be grabbed and utilized if you wanted to create your own. I think I've got enough in here to be able to create one with tree number two. So I'll say okay to that. I want the dimensioning to be on the ground because it's a ground measurement when we measure tree canopy. And for the scale, I want to associate the spread in meters to that. So now these will link together. I do want to make sure that the color is coming out correctly because I've used the earth uh, CAD layer within TBC quite a few times. Um, I'm using it for different things. and I'm going to define medium green for this particular tree. So now we have amazing tree with a spread and all the way down to symbology. You can turn these on under map settings, change the point symbols drop down to feature symbols. This will pull the symbols from your FXL file and display them in the map. We support point symbols, uh, point symbols which can be scaled with attributes. We also support block symbols, including two-point insertion blocks and three-point insertion blocks. A two-point block symbol will scale between two measured points, like this gate. A three-point block symbol will scale its length between the first two points measured and its width to the third measured point. 